92.9 Dave FM. Okay, so this is super cool. Please welcome my in-studio guest, Nika Costa. Hi, Nika. Hi. It's good to see you. You too. Okay, we got to just start from the beginning here, okay? okay. Uh-oh. All right. Do this we have that much time? <laughs> How much time do you have? Okay, so I um, had the opportunity to talk to you because you're playing The Loft tonight, yep. doing a show. Mm-hmm. You just released a new album mm-hmm. from a pebble to a pearl. Yep. And so I, I have to say, I, I'd heard of you and I didn't know that much about you. And then I, I started doing all this reading and watching all this in, these interviews with you. And you have been working your butt off for the past couple of years, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, aren't, haven't we all? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Doing something, you know. Okay, that was quite an I've introduction. Made a, I've made a few. I've made a few records, and just you know, keeping it moving. Okay, so people are stuff. are kind of comparing you, and how do you feel like this when people say? You know, if you like Amy Winehouse or if you like Duffy, you're going to love Nika Costa. Right. Well, this record is a is definitely, um, you know, a soul record, um, you know, and I set out to make a soul record because that was the, the music that I first kind of loved and wanted to why I wanted to kind of make records. So I went I went back to that. But, you know, if anyone kind of, um, you know, has a chance to discover me through this record, they'll probably go back to my older stuff um you know everybody got there something that i released in 2001 and can't ever did nothing from 2005 and um and kind of like you know trace back through my career and kind of see that i've been doing you know funk soul rock for you know years and years and years way before and you started very very young yes and yeah even before that yes okay so can i okay <laughs> I've done lots of i've had lots of <laughs> lots of careers can i just backtrack a little bit do you mind if i do yeah, that no, okay no, that's fine. okay um so you started off very young growing up in los angeles yep your dad was a very famous producer yeah uh-huh. composer. A- and yeah. so <laughs> you were exposed to working with people like quincy jones i mean this was your childhood right okay. yeah because my dad worked with um all those guys Frank Sinatra, the, the most notable. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh-huh. so, uh, so you're around this growing up, and d- did your family ever say to you, you know what, you may want to not do this, Nika. It's a tough uh, business. No, no, never. They were very supportive, and um, you know, I was singing from a really early age, and I think they, I think they could tell that I wasn't going to go out there and make a fool of myself. <laughs> like, right. They could tell that I was really into it, and I loved it, and I had a good voice as a kid, and. They, you know, they were just very supportive, and um, it's a hard business, but, I, you know, hopefully you don't uh, have parents that just, you know, deter you. Well, from, that's from good. The get, you know. <laughs> so you started really young. You had songs that were popular overseas. Yeah, so I made records when I was little. Okay, yeah. okay mm-hmm. so you, and we're on with Nika Costa, you're performing at the Loft tonight. Right. And so you're doing this, and you then you go back to high school the next day, right? You had records out, and you sort of kept this normal life going on. Is that right? Well, yeah. Back back then, yeah, I would you know kind of go on tour and then come back home and go to school, and you know. Okay, now we're gonna forth. we're gonna fast forward. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm just going all over the Do place it. with you. Do okay. It. <laughs> okay. So then, um, you, you keep on keep busy. You've got this band together, and the big I I've kept, keep reading that your band you have a big band and a horn section, and you're really laying it down for this show. Uh huh. Well, I have a I have a large band. It's not a big band. So it's not like just it's so just so everyone knows, I'm not doing like Frank Sinatra covers or something. <laughs> Um, Although that, I mean, it's not even that, it's not that big. It's just, um. How many people? Five, we're ten? Like, we're like seven or. It's big. Or so. It's big. I saw you on Conan last night. Right. And it was a large <laughs> group of people. It's, you know, we, we, I like to travel in large groups. It's fun, you know, it's fun for, um, for the shows because it just it gives so much more power and energy and vibe. And, you know, with soul music, you know, I, I can't do soul music without horns. It just it they they go hand in hand. Yeah, totally. Know? So it's it's exciting. You know, there's not that many bands out there kind of doing it like that. And so um, I think when people come to the show, they they they're seeing something that's not that they don't often get get to see, which is kind of cool. So well, I, I would highly recommend anybody seeing you live because a- everything I've seen is just phenomenal. We're on with uh, Nika Costa. Did you ever meet Frank Sinatra? Do you have memories of him at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, we knew each other really well, and uh, you know, he was my dad was his kind of 
you know, main main guy for, you know, years and years. So, but, you know, I was really young when, during those days. And, you know, kids are kind of not phased. They so you didn't really, care. Right. It didn't really. matter. It I was mean, just... I could tell he was good. And I could tell he was important. And right. I could tell he had a kind of a power or whatever. But I was also like, just throw me in the pool, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't really care what you, how you sing. I just want to be thrown in the pool and play and and did he actually throw you in the pool frank sinatra yeah i think he threw me in the pool a couple times okay that's good to know (laughs) was he smoking a cigarette at the time or (laughs) probably okay okay uh now uh your your last tour this is a big big tour for you you're i mean you are working your butt off you're uh, on conan one day you're doing a show the next day uh the last tour i had read you opened for britney spears i that wasn't the last tour i did but yeah i had a couple of dates um early on like quite a few years ago opening up for Britney which was an odd combo to say the least but um and how is that because I I've I've seen her live Uh and so you're going to one of your shows is really all about the music and the band and Mm -hmm. and we actually play and you actually play music right right okay good you said it yeah I didn't okay okay so (laughs) (laughs) so what was what was I mean what was the experience of that like because I would think that kind of audience would be completely different than what well they were five (laughs) and they had glow sticks and uh (laughs) We, you know what, we just, we just, once it, once it was decided to do it, we just, you know, I just go into every gig, no matter what the situation is, and just try to, try to do my best and represent myself, not try to cater to what tour I'm on or what audience. I just try to do my thing. And, you know, the crew was so excited to actually have work to do and like buttons to press while we were playing because they just kind of chill during her show. But um, <laughs> as you know, in, we're not gonna watch, we're gonna watch this show. Well, you know, it's it's a whole different thing, and and it really was a weird combination. But she was very sweet, and um, this was a long this was a long time ago, so it was so kind did of it, before the whole kind did, of breakdown. And everything. so did all of that surprise you that you worked with her, or uh, par for it, the course? I mean, I knew that it was very strange. It was a, just a strange combination. I my music is nothing like it, and. You know, I don't know the the powers that be, the record labels, and you know they they just want to get you out in front of large audiences. So well, sometimes you know the combinations don't really make sense, but it's more about just exposure. Sure. You know. Now you're on a completely new record label. You're yes, on yes, Stacks. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. So it that I mean, and that's really getting to the roots of what kind of music that you do. Yeah, and I think they really get it. You know, they have a they have an integrity and a and and a history to kind of. Um, uphold with stacks and they they really want to kind of see that um, integrity kind of